So it's hard to judge when we started Basel with a precise date, uh, but uh, the team did a little bit of uh, archaeology and we reckon it dates back to at least uh, 2014. Uh, here's an announcement where 10 years ago we were reaching out internally to look for Basel dog fooders uh, before publishing uh, the stuff externally a few months later. Um, you'll notice that the list of what we don't have couldn't possibly fit on the slide at this point. Five years later, uh, we reached a pretty major milestone. Uh, so this was when we finally called the open source version, version 1.0, which reflected our judgment on the maturity of what we achieved to date. Um, at this stage, we started to slow down the rate of incompatible changes. We added formal semantic versioning and very importantly, the long-term support for major versions that meant that enterprise users could sort of trust uh, the support regi regime, uh, regime of, the, of the project. Um, so today is arguably another major milestone uh, because this is the first BaselCon that isn't run by Google. It's run by the community via the Linux Foundation. And uh, we're very proud of this achievement. Um, we've been working on the technical foundations to make this possible, um, the, the possibility to share ownership of some parts of the ecosystem formally, in particular via the Starlarkification, externalizing the rules from the Bazel code base itself, and improved extensibility mechanisms where it can be very easy for third parties to own and manage extensions to the Bazel ecosystem. And with Bazel 8, that is the next major release, we're completing this major arc of work. Um, this year we're focused on the non-technical aspects um, and this conference represents one of those. So it's essentially the transitioning of the governance of the conference uh, to, from the Google Bazel team to the uh, Linux Foundation and the community. Um, and as we've just seen in the note about the sponsors, the fact that Google is one of the equal platinum sponsors rather than the owner of the conference kind of represents the actual codification of this change. We're of course still completely happy to continue to support the uh, initiative. So I'm just gonna look, look through a bit of a history of uh, like how the contributions in 2024 are stacking up in terms of the richness and diversity of the contributors to, to Bazel itself. So this is just a look at who contributed from Google to the code base of Bazel in the past 12 months. Um, once you add in the uh, broader ecosystem, uh, you can see that already the number of Google users is dwarfed. But once you start looking slightly more broadly at the Bazel central registry, the numbers start to stack up. I'm hoping some of you folks in the audience can uh, see, your, see your pictures here. Um, and uh, then if you, if you look uh, broader into the Bazel build GitHub org, the numbers get even more impressive. So there's uh, 625 contributors to the Bazel build GitHub org in the, t the last 12 months. And then it's even broader than that because we've created the separate uh, GitHub entity called uh, Bazel Contrib to officially host the parts of Bazel that aren't owned by Google, that are now owned by the Linux Foundation, and then the numbers jump up again. And this doesn't even look, as I understand it, at uh, contributors to documentation that's over and above. So what I think what you have here is a picture of a healthy ecosystem with many contributors from different organizations around the world and with an opening up of the and sharing of the governance model of the code base, especially with respect to the uh, external contribs uh, enabled by Starlarkification and other extensibility mechanisms. 
So just as a, just a touch point, a sort of little story about how this plays out in practice. So after uh, one of the recent Bazel releases, there was a problem uh, that some of our internal users were reporting, and our internal team was working away trying to fix this problem. And then this pull request appeared from the community, and it actually fixed the problem, right? So already it is the case that the community is taking on the overhead of solving problems unprompted, helping everyone in the community who used Bazel. So thank you very much to all of you who are doing that. Um, uh, so. I put on my political hat as a, an engineering director in Google. Obviously, I do have to justify this internally in, in our internal uh, budgetary allocation discussions and so on and so forth. So I'm perfectly happy to share publicly my thoughts on this. So essentially, we are happy to continue with this because we're very happy that we benefit from community contributions. Um, we're also happy that there's a sort of to and from of projects in and out of our internal ecosystem that we call Google 3, our big large mono repo that most of our projects are in. And that uses Blaze, the internal version of Bazel, which of course shares nearly all of its code base with Bazel. And so if, if we want to say open source one of the bits of code there, the fact that we can use Bazel makes that transfer process easier. And similarly, if we have a third party dependency on a project we're involved with and we want to include it back into our Google 3 ecosystem so that other internal projects t can depend on it, projects that use Bazel are much easier to integrate because of the similar philosophy. So in addition to the, all of that, Google itself is a heavy Bazel user. So even though the majority of our developers use Google 3 and Blaze, we have many, many projects, both open source and otherwise, that actually use uh, Bazel. And so we are supporting, we, we call it internally 1P developers, first party developers. So some of our first party developers are Bazel developers. So it's not as simple as Bazel equals external. Um, and it's also great that w we like the idea that we're thought leaders and in helping influence the world with your help um, about how best to do uh, build configuration management going forward. And the more we can do that, the more it creates a pool of people who we may potentially hire or we may potentially give back to the community. It's kind of a two-way street. And just this common knowledge base is absolutely fantastic. Um, and I know that uh, at various stages, people are a little bit critical about Google pulling the plug on certain projects and so on, and certainly I've been a frustrated consumer in that bucket. Uh, the fact that all the, this code is open source provides a safety net, but also this new community governance model is a second safety net. So we're very uh, aware of our reputational issues in this regard, and we want to continue to be a good citizen of the community and we thank you for all your support in doing so. So I'm gonna hand over now to Toby uh, to continue with the next part of the keynote. Thank you very much. Thank you. I wanna look back at previous Basel cons. Uh, we started with a user conference in 2017 in Sunnyvale. Not far from here, there were 200 people who attended. Maybe there are a few of you attended as well. Maybe I can get a show of hands. Uh, okay, 15 or so, uh, not too many. Uh, it was very unstructured, I have to say. We had a lot of free time, which has pros and cons. Um, I think we uh, got a long way until here, um, going through the journey. Uh, next year, 2018 in New York. Um, Biggest complaint was the room is way too small. I can smell other people. <laughs> um, and we had the first uh, BaselCon satellite event with a hackathon at Bloomberg, and I think a record number of pull requests closed at, during that hackathon. 2019, uh, we came back to Sunnywell with 300 attendees. Uh, we realized that self-driving car companies love Basel. We don't know, but we appreciate it. Uh, we heard a lot of migration stories. 
I'm skipping over the pandemic years. Uh, back in New York with 260 attendees, um, first office hours hosted by non-Googlers. And uh, you can see that we have this journey of sharing responsibility and involvement with the community here. Um, one of the aspects are ongoing special interest groups. If you want to join them, there's a list on the website, or if you want to create a new one. And there's later also a BOF session, I think, that has this as a topic. Last year, we went to Munich, first time outside of the US. Um, we had to turn away 200 people that were on the wait list. And uh, we figured this year we should have a larger room. And it makes me happy to see that it's almost full. Uh, maybe a few people are still sleeping. Uh, we invited last year non-Googlers to program selection, another step in the right direction. Now I would like to invite people from the community on stage who helped us organize this BaselCon. Alex Eagle, uh, co-founder and CEO of Aspect Build Systems. Helen Altschuler, co-founder and CEO of Engflow. And Chuck Grindle, senior software engineer at Reveal Te Technology. Thank you. All right. Uh, yesterday's uh, historic Starship launch actually uh, shows also how important it is to have a thriving community around Basel. So back in BaselCon 2017, we just went through nice history here, thanks, Toby. Uh, SpaceX engineers Patrick and Matt uh, told us the story of Basel adoption, which started with 0.4. Anyone here remembers what Basel looked like at 0.4? <laughs> Some hands. All right. Well, it was. At the time, it was uh, better than what the alternatives that they saw in the market. And so uh, they were very involved in the early days, and Basil team as well, and BaselCon 2017 was a place for them and for the community uh, to talk about some of these hot topics. And so today, uh, we are a thriving community, and this is our first launch. So we've launched uh, BaselCon Community Edition, thanks to Linux Foundation. Uh, and uh, last year in Munich, uh, we heard at the keynote that let's have the conference be organized by the community. And so we talked, a few of us talked to Google uh, leaders, uh, Michal Afulo and John Field, and we got the buy-in. Thank you. And this time, this is the conference. And we hope that all of you will stay involved as part of the foundation, and uh, we'll talk more about this. Uh, yeah, so uh, as uh, Helm just mentioned, we really uh, came together and we really had two, two primary goals. Um, the first goal was around organizing BaselCon 2024, and the other was really around how do we better support the, uh, the community and the projects that are important to the community. And what we realized immediately was we needed a partner. So uh, the search for a partner began. Um, we talked to the Eclipse Foundation, the Apache Software Foundation, and of course the Linux Foundation. Um, only one of them, the, the Linux Foundation, provided the uh, services that we needed to, uh, to host BaselCon and uh, to develop the constructs needed to better serve the, uh, the communi community at large. So why the Linux Foundation? Uh, oops, there we go. OK. Uh, they actually have a, a dedicated event planning team. And by the way, here you go. This is what it all is. This is a fantastic. Um, they are actually the home to many popular technical projects, uh, the Linux operating system, the CD Foundation, Jenkins, and many, many others. And lastly, many of the, organi uh, many of the organi organizations that use Bazel are already members of the Linux Foundation, including Google. As you can see, we achieved the first of our goals, BaselCon 2024. Thank you to Allison Dreisch and the, re and the rest of the events team at the Linux Foundation for making this a reality. However, this was just the three of, of uh, distinct uh, uh, priorities, and I'm going to hand it over here uh, to talk about the rest. Oh, you got one? I have my own mic okay. for some reason. Oh, you're winning. Hey, everyone. Um, this is incredibly exciting. It, uh, I will echo a little bit of what you've already heard, which is that uh, you know, last year when we came to Munich, the Basel team, the engineers on the Basel team had to do all of this work to put together a conference at the Munich office. But even the night before the keynote, we were starting on the effort that you've heard about to bring that event to a bigger audience. It's incredibly exciting to be here in front of all of you. This is the best BaselCon ever by far. And of course, it's the smallest that we will have in the future because we're only going to grow from here. 
so as, as Chuck said, getting here to BaselCon was the first thing we needed to do with the Linux Foundation. I'll describe the other two briefly. So first of all, we needed a place for the code to go. Of course, Linux Foundation hosts a lot of open source projects. As Michal mentioned earlier, the Bazel Contrib GitHub org is the first one we donated. Bazel Contrib was created originally by one of the special interest groups that Toby mentioned, the Rules Authors Special Interest Group, which Chuck and I have been leading for a few years. Thank you, Chuck. Um, and there's a bunch of useful projects in there. You may have used some of the, the repos that are, uh, have been in there. And what we created under the Linux Foundation is called a technical steering committee, which is a fancy way of saying basically technical leads, code reviewers, maintainers for all of the projects in that GitHub org can come together. And we've had meetings every week for four years, I think. Um, three? Three years. Three, year, three years, yeah. So, and you can go back and see all the meeting notes. We've talked about lots of topics. And we try to help the, the authors of the projects in this repo to make progress. But of course, we, what we really want is a neutral governing body for that intellectual property, and that's what the Linux Foundation provides. So that was pretty obvious. We created the Technical Steering Committee, and in fact, not only did the Basil Contrib GitHub org, which is now the home of this Technical Steering Committee, um, but the Google team has started to donate repositories as well. So a bunch of the repositories in the Basil Build GitHub org are really community maintained. Um, so Yun from the Bazel team put in a bunch of effort to start actually donating a bunch of repos from Google, which is much more complicated than it sounds. The Google Open Source Program Office doesn't normally transfer ownership of repos. This is an exception that we needed. Um, Yun did such a great job, and he's not able to be here today because the United States uh, uh, border group decided that his passport needed to be more than six months from its renewal date, and so he was not allowed to have a boarding pass for his flight. So I just want to give a hand to Yun for all of the work that he put in to getting... Thank you, Yun. I'm sure, I'm sure he's, he's watching us. Um, these repos that I've listed here are some of the ones that have the most stars. A bunch of these are things that your organization depends on. These now live in the Basil Contrib GitHub org, which raises one obvious question, which is, I thought Google was staffing and funding the work for everything that was in the Bazel Build GitHub org. Does this mean those things are no longer staffed and funded by Google? And the answer is Google was not staffing and funding these projects. These were community projects under the Bazel Build GitHub org. I'm not trying to split hairs, but the important distinction is that a lot of potential contributions, resources that those projects needed access to, I think it was hard to get them because the perception was that why would I donate to this thing? Google has plenty of resources. They surely don't need mine to keep these projects going. So what we really want to do is the third step here is to create what's called a directed fund. Linux Foundation is very careful to keep the technical parts and the money parts separate. So the directed fund is the place where companies can join as members under the Linux Foundation, and then actually help to staff the projects that are in the Bazel Contrib GitHub org. Today, they're maintained by volunteers, but if your company is already a member of the Linux Foundation, you can see the link here of members. Maybe you don't even know. What I'm asking you for you to do is we need five companies, approximately, to get this off the ground, where you can go and ask your director or your VP to find whoever it is in your company that is the point of contact for the Linux Foundation and sign up to be a member of a new foundation that we would create, which is a directed fund is basically called a foundation. So there will be some new foundation. Hopefully next year at BaselCon we'll have an announcement about that. And we don't know exactly what this foundation will fund. Obviously part of being a member of it is that your company then has some amount of ability to direct the roadmap. Uh, a few ideas of things that it might need, something on the module registry to help you know which modules are well maintained. IDE integrations are always a problem with Bazel that could use help. Uh, Bazel documentation, there's not currently a tech writer staffed on the project. There's a lot of documentation missing, making things work as well on Windows as they do on Mac and Linux. And of course, many more ideas that you all have for what you would love to see be funded. So with that, um, I will hand let's, it back to Helen. Let's, uh, let's dream. Um, I would like to welcome you all in New York City next year, where, which is where I live, which is also home of uh, Basil team uh, at Google New York. Uh, of course, stay tuned. More plans need to be worked out. But as you see, we have an interesting uh, alternation between New York and California with Munich taking taken stance in uh, 2023. So uh, look out for more announcements from Linux Foundation, and we hope to see you at the next, uh, at the next BaselCon. Basil is obviously a pretty uh, complicated tool. Uh, the implementation is pretty complex. It's pretty old, relies on a lot of old stuff. Uh, 
occasionally basil, it seems to me, uh, I can't think of it off the top of my head right now, but occasionally there's really big changes that are really valuable. I mean, basil mod was one of them in the last couple of years. Um, and traditionally, when there's such big architectural changes, um, Google's support has been really valuable. As, as we all know, it can be really challenging to sort of um, uh, moderate ambitious um, technical architectural changes. My question is, what is your vision for how that will be handled uh, going forwards? Um, will, those, will there be, be more of an appetite for uh, ambitious changes from community members as well, given that this has largely been Google? I, I do think that um, we, we have to distinguish between the core of Bazel and all the surrounding tools and ecosystem. For everything surrounding the core, it's easy. There's a lot of opportunities for ownership and sharing responsibility. For the core of Basel, I think it's a little, little bit more nuanced because um, we have to keep the engine running at Google, right? And we are, in the end, also on the hook for any maintenance um, that comes along with a new feature. But we are happily we are happy to talk about additions or changes, big architectural changes to Basel. Um, but first talk to us and not just send a big PR and say, oh, this is happening. I do think there are certain people in the, in the community who already did big changes to Basel. Um, if you want to talk more, um, come to me later. I would just add, maybe it wasn't fully clear here, that the core of Bazel uh, is remaining with Google stewardship. So it's really the surrounding ecosystem around this, the, which, as Alex mentioned, was already maintained by the community itself that is part of the Linux Foundation at this point. Now, of course, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a great first step. Sorry, one more, sorry, one more addition thing. The technical steering committee is exactly the mechanism for the community to help um, uh, drive the architectural decisions for the ecosystem that we're just uh, talking about. So to directly answer your answer, that the answer is to touch base and be uh, part of the technical steering committee. Are, are there plans <clears throat> for Basil to include non-Google contributors, in, in, like with commit bit and stuff like that? Well, the source of truth of the Bazel code base is internally in Google, um, and we don't have any plans to change that, so it's, it's hard to give it to non-Googlers. But already today, as you saw on the slides before, there is plenty of people externally, even more people than Googlers, who contribute to the Bazel core, and you can do so through PRs on GitHub. Okay. Thank you. Um, with that, uh, another round of applause.